The pattern that we see is not explained by Islamic fundamentalism, but by military occupation. Uh, Iraq is another prime example of uh, this occupation logic at work. Um, before our invasion in March 2003, Iraq never experienced a suicide attack in its history. Then, as the occupation grew, suicide attacks grew until uh, 2007, when starting in 2007, the United States shifted policies, especially in Anbar province, to offer Sunni terrorists who were doing the lion's share of the suicide attacks um, in Iraq, offer them a deal. We'll pay you $300 a month to do one thing. Don't kill us. We will let you buy guns with that money. We hope you'll go get a job with that money. But the one thing we won't let you do is we won't give you another paycheck if you kill us. Well, that policy turned out to be surprisingly effective for many people, uh, but it was based on the idea that many of those terrorists were not driven by religion. They were driven by the need to secure themselves. And so that policy produced the Anbar Awakening. Uh, it generated um, support for 100,000 um, Iraqi Sunnis to secure themselves, secure themselves against the terrorists, secure themselves against the Shia-dominated government, and yes, even against American military presence. And what that did is it had a powerful effect in reducing suicide terrorism in Iraq by 40 percent in a single year. Then we followed that up with policy of withdrawing American combat forces. And since November 2008, the United States has withdrawn over 100,000 combat forces in Iraq. And over the last two and a half years, suicide terrorism in Iraq is down 83%. This is a substantial decline in uh, suicide terrorism. It's a substantial improvement in the stability of Iraq. We also see this logic at work in Afghanistan. Before America's toppled the Taliban in fall 2001, Afghanistan never experienced a suicide attack in its history. And then, as we, after we toppled the Taliban, for the first few years, there were just a couple of suicide attacks in the country. And starting in 2006, there was a sudden explosion of suicide terrorism. Why? How did Afghanistan go from being the good war to the bad war? What happened in 2006? Did the Taliban suddenly become more religious? Um, was Afghanistan suddenly poorer in 2006? No, something else happened in 2006. The key thing that's important is that during the first several years of our occupation of Afghanistan, we had just a small number of troops in the country that weren't scattered around the country. They were concentrated in Kabul, essentially to keep Karzai alive and protect him from being assassinated. And then in October 2003, the UN gave the United States a mandate to spread its combat forces around the rest of the country. And then the International Security Forces, uh, that's the organization, the military organization of American and Western troops in Afghanistan, developed a four-stage plan to occupy the country. Stage one was to go to the north, our friends, the Northern Alliance. Stage two was to go to the west, more friends. And then starting in early 2006, that's when we went to the south and the east of Afghanistan. That's when our army occupied the Pashtun homeland of Afghanistan. And that's when suicide terrorism exploded in the country. Uh, we can identify. Um, the, uh, uh, corroborate the identities of 93 of the Afghan suicide attackers. 90% are Afghan nationals. They're not just any Afghan nationals, they're Pashtuns. Uh, those Pashtun suicide attackers are attacking mainly American and Western troops in their homeland. This is why the more we've poured troops into southern eastern Afghanistan, the more suicide terrorism has grown. So what should we do? Well, the policy that comes out of this research is not simply to cut and run, that is, abruptly withdraw from uh, our overseas commitments and interests, nor is it to stay and die, continue Western military presence on territory terrorist prize. Rather, it's to pursue a new middle ground strategy to secure our obligations and interests overseas that's called offshore balancing. 
Offshore balancing relies on offshore air and naval power and, in extremis, rapidly deployable ground forces that could be put in quickly and then taken out quickly, uh, as well as long-term onshore economic and political tools to support local allies. So that this combination of offshore military power and onshore economic and political power can secure American and Western interests in key regions overseas, not just for a year or two, not just hold on by our fingernails, but for decades. Because that's the real approach to making America and our allies more secure.